Welcome to Just Asia, AHRC TV's weekly human rights program. These are the headlines. Bangladesh lawyer detained by Malaysian immigration. Nepali girl brutally trashed for relationship with Dalit boy. Court sentences military general and others in Thailand's largest human trafficking case. New report launched on police torture in Indonesia. India's Supreme Court to hear a petition on extrajudicial killings by border security forces in West Bengal. Three urgent appeals from Indonesia, Sri Lanka and Pakistan. Welcome to AHRC TV's Just Asia. I am Vini Ivaswani. This week, Just Asia begins with the case of Bangladeshi lawyer and human rights defender Adilu Rahman Khan, who was detained by Malaysian immigration authorities for more than 12 hours at Kuala Lumpur Airport last week. Without giving any reasons for the detention, the authorities finally deported him back to Dhaka. Adiller was to attend a two-day conference organized by Anti-Death Penalty Asian Network scheduled for July 21st to 22nd in Kuala Lumpur. Rights groups say Adiller is the latest defender prevented from entering Malaysia, including Hong Kong's Joshua Wong and Indonesia's Mugianto Sipin. Just Asia speaks to Adiller for details on his detention. On 19th of July night, I took the Malaysian Airlines flight to go to Kuala Lumpur to attend the second general assembly of ADPAN. When I arrived in the early morning at the Kuala Lumpur airport immigration desk, they, uh, after seeing my passport, uh, sent me to a different uh, room, which is a police room, and they, after screening my passport, after keeping me uh, waiting for some time, sent me to a different facility, which is the holding lounge, which is in fact the detention uh, place in the Kuala Lumpur airport. And in the meantime, when I was uh, being sent there, I could inform the organizers that this is my situation. When I was uh, kept there, my cell phones, my laptops were taken away from me. I was asked to remove my uh, shoes and my luggage was kept in a different place and I was under lock and key for about 12 hours. And in the meantime, National Human Rights Commission of Myanmar was informed and um, Swaram was informed and they initiated the process to uh, get me out of that detention situation. But finally, uh, I was sent back to Dhaka and I was not allowed to go inside of uh, Kuala Lumpur to attend the program. During my detention, I saw many Bangladeshis along with other country uh, people who came to Malaysia with valid visa. They were barred also to enter Malaysia and they were kept in the detention facility. Some of them who were having uh, the return flight tickets, they were slowly sent back to their uh, countries of origin. But those who didn't have the return tickets were suffering. If you don't have money, you can't have food. That is the situation there. So I've seen many Bangladeshis who are poor migrant workers. They were only living on water, from the tap water. And that's a kind of deplorable situation, what I have seen. This situation uh, happened because there is a kind of uh, repressiveness which I have seen about the people who are coming from Bangladesh uh, in the Kuala Lumpur airport. There are some uh, illegal practices also. If you have uh, money, then you can at least get some uh, access to the phones or you can buy food. This is not the uh, way a people from a different country should be treated. Secondly, uh, when I returned to Dhaka, I tried to find out what has happened to me, but yet I am waiting for that result. I understand Malaysian National Human Rights Commission is investigating and I'm uh, waiting for that investigation. A horrific video surfaced in Nepal last week, showing the brutal beating of a girl, Manita Yadav, in Rupindei district. 
Family members and villagers were trashing Manita for falling in love with a Dalit youth. The girl's family also forced the boy's family to cough up Nepali rupees 100,000 as a penalty. The local Marchavar area police initially arrested Manata's father, but released him soon after due to the pressure from local representatives. Only after much social media uproar did the Rupandehi district police arrest Manata's father, elder brother, uncle, aunt, and a villager Pashupeti Koiri. An attempt to murder case has been registered against the five persons, including Manata's father, at Rupandehi district court. A departmental action is also being initiated against the Marchawar Area Police Office Inspector who released Manata's father earlier, although the police have arrested the culprits. This incident exposes how violence is accepted in society and the breakdown of collective conscience. Only when rule of law principles are consistently upheld and when perpetrators are held accountable under the law will society progress. Thailand's sentencing of a military general and other senior officials in the country's largest ever human trafficking trial is a major step up in combating trafficking and protecting migrant rights. A Bangkok criminal court on July 19 convicted 62 of 102 defendants for serious crimes including human trafficking, conspiracy, murder, beatings, coercion and possession of weapons. The court sentenced the accused from 4 to 94 years in prison and fines of up to US dollars 7,900. According to Brad Adams of Human Rights Watch, these sentences should send a clear message to human traffickers in Thailand that they face severe punishment whatever their rank or status. The trial arose from the May 2015 discovery of mass graves containing 36 bodies at a jungle camp in Thailand's southern Songkla province. Police reported that the bodies were those of Rohingya migrants from Burma and Bangladesh who died from starvation or disease or were killed while human traffickers held them and extorted ransom from their family or friends. Human Rights Watch is urging the Thai government to allow Rohingya to seek migrant worker status in the country so they can work and allow the UN Refugee Agency to assess their asylum claims. In Indonesia, a new report titled Police in the Shadow of Torture was launched by prominent NGO Jakarta Legal Aid on July 19. The report documents 37 cases of torture in and around Jakarta over the last three years, mostly committed by police officers. Speakers from the police headquarters, the Asian Human Rights Commission and the National Police Commission were present at the launch. Ms. Ayu Iza Tiara from Jakarta Legal Aid emphasized that the police mostly tortured suspects to obtain confessions largely due to the absence of legal punishment for torture. Police Brigadier General Seful Zakri acknowledged that torture during investigation remains a problem despite instructions to punish torture by the Chief of National Police. Meanwhile, AHRC representative Chris Bientaro pointed out the lack of accountability within the police institution and how the number of torture cases is much greater than the number of investigations and prosecutions. Very few torture cases make it to courts, with most going to ethic mechanism. Ms. Poinki Indarti, representative of the National Police Commission, stated that the commission has strongly communicated to the police to ensure that all crimes of torture must be investigated and produced before the court. Victims and family members also participated and delivered their testimony, including Mr. Hiranto, who was illegally arrested and tortured by the Jakarta Metropolitan Police earlier and the mother of Andrew, a street musician tortured by the police. Nah, mungkin dari rekrutmen tadi kita menambahkan, ya, tidak bisa jeli, padahal kita sudah mencoba sistem betah, ya, dengan bersih, ya, parah-parah, humanis, 
Tapi ya kenyataan juga namanya sistem pinter-pinternya manusia kita ini ya paling bisa aja lolos. Nah mungkin tidak terdeteksi ya ada yang karakter di rumahnya nggak benar masuk polisi nah, akhirnya membawa dampak. Kedua di pendidikan, nah, di pendidikan juga tadi sudah saya sampaikan tujuh bulan bisa apalah dia mampu belum menguasai kuhap, KUHP, undang-undang yang lain, ya, macam-macam, ya. Kemudian dia ditugaskan, ditambah lagi tadi juga apa benar ya sampaikan tekanan dari pimpinan harus berhasil, ya. Sementara eh, dia ditegak target waktu, kan kita juga ada penangkapan satu kali dua puluh jam harus bisa menentukan ini di mau dilanjut atau tidak. Nah, kemudian ya keterbatasan dia ya mengkonfirmasi bukti tadi dia hanya dengar pengakuan ya dia hanya melihat bukti saat tapi dia tidak bisa eh, apa me- mencek cross lah ya namanya pengakuan itu eh, dia pegang fotonya pakai foto golok kalau nanti kan goloknya dicek kalau ya. kemudian di sidik jarinya di di situ ada enggak? Nah ini waktu-waktu ini dia dikejar dengan target untuk penangkapan tadi kesejahteraan juga termasuk ya bahwa anggota eh, tadi sampaikan promosi kita baru 51 persen ya dan juga kemampuan anggota apa sarana prasarana yang ada juga untuk mendukung jangan diharapkan kita lihat film tadi ya pakai Moving to India in April 2017, the Supreme Court agreed to hear a public interest litigation filed by Masam, AHRC's partner organization in West Bengal, seeking an independent fact-finding probe into allegations of extrajudicial killings, rapes, and torture by officers of the Border Security Force in Bengal. While the date for the next hearing has not been set, this is a significant development in the petition which was filed in 2012. Given the favorable judgment of the Supreme Court in the case of extrajudicial killings in Manipur, as Just Asia reported last week, it is hoped that in this case too, there will be quick hearings and a positive development for victims of border security force atrocities, which are continuing. Massam regularly sends the AHRC details of such cases for which urgent appeals are issued. Finally, the urgent appeals weekly features three cases from Indonesia, Sri Lanka, and Pakistan. In Papua, Indonesia, 15-year-old high school student Albert Navipa was brutally tortured by police officers for attacking a dancing show. In Sri Lanka, 18-year-old Samitha Lakmal was severely tortured by two police officers attached to the Kantale police station and two other assailants. After taking treatment at a hospital, Samitha is now in hiding. In Pakistan, a young student was gang-raped and blackmailed into marriage. The perpetrators have links to a trafficking gang operating under the patronage of the Gujarat city administration and police. That is all for this episode of Just Asia. For more on these and other issues, please visit www.humanrights.asia or www.alrc.asia/justasia. Thank you for watching and see you next week.